SEC now investigating the timing of Elon Musk's filing of a required disclosure that investors must submit when they buy more than 5 percent of a company's shares. It's going to report in The Wall Street Journal. Elon Musk filed the disclosure on April 4th, which was 10 days after he reached his stake of 5 percent in Twitter. It's according to the report. Joining us right now on the phone is former SEC chairman Jay Clayton. He's a CBC contributor, also Apollo lead independent director. I want to talk to him about that. And then, of course, crypto and uh, what's happening in that space. But, Jay, in terms of Elon Musk, um, how do you think the SEC is really thinking about this? Uh, good morning, Andrew. And uh, actually, the journal article that you you cited uh, did a nice job of what's uh, of outlining what's uh, going on here, which is, you know, we have disclosure rules that once you cross a threshold, uh, you have an obligation to the marketplace, uh, the other constituents, the company, other other shareholders, uh, to disclose that you have that stake. Um, the report is that there's an investigation and that uh, the stake was disclosed late. Um, the SEC is going to look at that. And I thought the journal did a particularly good job of laying out what the potential remedies might be here um, in the event there is a violation, including whether uh, there's a disgorgement of ill-gotten gains uh, because you were able to build a stake at a lower price um, or others. But th that's what's going on here, Andrew. I, I in terms of what the, the remedy or penalty will or should be, slap on the wrist more? I'm, I'm not going to get ahead of the staff. You know, I have uh, great respect for my former colleagues at the SEC. I'm sure they're looking into the various factors here, um, uh, a range of possible outcomes uh, here, uh, as reported in the journal. Um, but I think that I think they're going to dig in. Uh, I think they're going to dig in as they do. And uh, and uh, we'll just continue to watch this space. Can we talk crypto? Uh, we're looking at Tether this morning, uh, talking about them breaking the buck. Obviously, uh, we've uh, had this uh, with one of the other stable coins over the past 48 hours and Bitcoin has plunged. This is something you've been concerned about for a long time. Uh, I have been. And um, look, in the crypto space, there are a bunch of different instruments. Um, when we talk about stable coins, uh, there's a range of stable coins. Um, there, there can be a stable coin that is backed one to one with cash. Um, and then there are stable coins that can be backed with uh, what I would say is other credit instruments or, or in the case of uh, the one reported over, overnight, um, other, other crypto assets. When you get away from one-to-one -one backing with cash or something very close to cash, like uh, short-term treasuries, uh, you're in the area of what I would say is something very akin to a money market mutual fund, Andrew. And investors, the public, uh, users of these, should have the same kind of disclosure around any product like that that you would have in a money market mutual fund. And let me make another point here. We have looked at money market mutual funds um, and their potential to add instability in times like this over the years, whether it goes back to 2008 um, or most recently in 2020. And there are rigorous rules around the amount of liquidity they have to have, the nature of the instruments, um, and the like. That absolutely should be in this space. Um, there's no doubt in my mind. Um, but I do believe that a well-constructed stablecoin, and whether it's um, backed by uh, a, a regulated bank or clearly backed by cash or treasuries, is um, a means to facilitate transactions that has proven to be scalable and useful. So, you know, on the one hand, I see the power of this technology, and on the other, I'm very much for regulation in this space.